When Governor Macquarie commissioned Francis Greenway to design the Hyde Park Barracks in 18, 1816, 1817, among his instructions was the, um, the need for a large clock. Now, Governor Macquarie was very keen on, on reorganising the way that work was taking place in the colony. He was very keen to get convicts and the town settlers themselves to be much more efficient and to be much more conscious of time. Uh, so a public clock here on the barracks really symbolises a new way of, of organising work and, and, and developing the economy. This is Australia's longest continuously operating public clock. It's been ticking away since 1819. It was built and installed by the convict clockmaker James Oatley, uh, but, but here's the mystery. Oatley's face and hands are still moving around outside, but here inside, behind the scenes, is a new clock mechanism. It was installed in the 1830s after Oatley's clock became unreliable. Although it's not labelled and it's not actually branded, it's pretty clear that it was built in London in the 1830s by the company um, Volumy and Sons, who were actually clockmakers to the king. It's an incredibly powerful, in, in, incredibly prestigious clock. And in fact, it could, have, it could have run three or four faces. We don't know uh, when it arrived, we don't know who installed it, but it continues to drive the hands on the face that um, James Oatley built in 1819. So we, in a sense, we have a clock that um, has, uh, has been built by many hands. The face that um, faces the street and um, the internal mechanism that's um, hidden here inside the roof space. So what really amazes me is just the incredible influence this clock has had on so many thousands of lives. Yeah, the, the convicts, the immigrant girls, the hundreds of courts in session here at the Hyde Park Barracks, and all of those people passing by out on Queen's Square. It, it, it's still ticking today and, and still continues to have an enormous influence on, on, on Sydney life today.